traffic signs. You see them everywhere, but did you ever wonder how they are made? Grimco has been manufacturing traffic signs ever since the invention of the automobile. Grimco has two manufacturing facilities, one in Akron, Ohio, and the other in Owensville, Missouri. The primary base material used in manufacturing traffic signs is aluminum, and the Akron facility is where the process begins. Aluminum is desirable for traffic signs because it is strong, yet lightweight. Grimco purchases aluminum on a coil directly from aluminum mills in four standard thicknesses, 63 thousandths of an inch, 80 thousandths of an inch, 100 thousandths of an inch, and 125 thousandths of an inch. There are also two standard alloys used, 3105 and 5052. The aluminum as it arrives from the mill contains shape issues due to coil set, slitting, and production method. It is slightly bowed and wavy. In addition, it is greasy, dirty, and lacks the surface treatment that will allow adhesive to adhere to it. So the coil is run through the coil line where it will be leveled, cleaned, and treated. To load the coil onto the coil line, the coil must first be rotated 90 degrees to the upright orientation. This is done at the upender. The upended coil is transferred to the coil trolley. And then transferred to the coil line payoff mandrel. The jaws of the mandrel expand and grip the coil tightly from the inside. As the aluminum is uncoiled from the mandrel, it goes into the leveler. The leveler uses 21 2 and 3 quarter chromed work rolls with 10 backup flights to penetrate the aluminum coil to correct any shape issues it may have. After the material exits the leveler, it is completely flat. The aluminum then enters the cleaning and rinsing tanks. The cleaning tank holds a solution of industrial detergent and water that is heated to 120 degrees. The solution is continually monitored for the correct concentration. Much like an automated car wash, the material goes through brushes, soap, and rinse stations before it is dried using high-velocity forced air. The material then passes through the allodyne coater, where a thin layer of allodyne solution is applied to both sides, goes through a baking oven, and cured. This allodyne coating serves two purposes. First, it acts as a primer, making subsequent applications of reflective sheeting or paint to adhere better. Secondly, it is a preservative, allowing the aluminum to be outdoors in the elements for dozens of years without corroding when hung vertically. The next station in the coil line is the rewinder. The rewinder takes the aluminum, which is now leveled, cleaned, and treated, and winds it back up for later use on the stamping lines. The rewinder wraps the aluminum tightly and straight onto the rewind mandrel. Again, the jaws of the mandrel grip the coil tightly from the inside. The mandrel jaws then retract, and the coil is pushed off of the rewind mandrel and onto the takeoff tree, which is then rotated, presenting the freshly leveled, washed, and treated coil to the forklift operator, who then moves the coil away from the mainline operation and to the stamping lines. The coil line also has the capability to make large blanks or flat sheets that many customers use. To do this, the rewinder is simply bypassed and the coil continues down the line. This is now considered to be in coil line press mode. The aluminum strip travels into a slacking pit. The feed rolls have some slack to pull out of as the line runs consistently as it feeds down and pulls up into the press. As the aluminum feeds up out of the slacking pit and into the press, the feed rolls material into the press. We have multiple dies in the press. The shear blade die is running right now. It is cutting a straight sheet. The sheet is fed onto a conveyor, then stacked onto a skid using automation. The coil line press has three dies, 36 inch, 
48 inch and sheer. If there are large quantities of standard size blanks needed, then this is where the rewind coils come into play. These coils are taken to the stamping lines, which are complex and largely automated machines that take coil and process it into finished aluminum blanks. Each stamping line is slightly different from the others, but they are all very large, about 45 feet long and about 15 feet tall. It is only in relationship to the massive 250 foot main line that the stamping lines seem small. There are four stamping lines at the Akron facility. Each stamping line has a crew of two men and is capable of producing approximately 500 to 1200 parts per hour. At this rate, each line will consume a coil of aluminum every 30 to 45 minutes. With all four stamping lines running simultaneously, the Akron facility can process 12,500 to 15,000 pounds of aluminum per hour. For large quantities of standard traffic blanks, the stamping lines are exceedingly effective and efficient. Let's look in detail how the stamping lines work. Here we see a 12 inch wide coil being loaded on to stamping line number one. It will be processed into 12 by 18 inch blanks. The coil, freshly leveled, washed and treated on the main line arrives via forklift. Once loaded and secured onto the payoff mandrel, the material is threaded through a straightener to flatten the aluminum. Reflective sheeting is loaded onto the laminator and is threaded down to the material stock where the pressure-sensitive adhesive permanently bonds the sheeting to the blank. The pressure which activates the sheeting's adhesive is provided by a hard rubber roller pressing down with 50 pounds of pneumatic force. The reflective material will allow the sign to be visible at night when a vehicle's lights shines on it. Currently, Grimco is one of a few companies applying sheeting using this inline application method. The aluminum then goes through the feed rollers and then into the press bed itself. Guards and shields keep the operator's hands, hair and clothing from getting tangled in the machinery and keep any loose pieces of scrap from flying out to the operator's position. Each press is loaded with progressive dies. This means that for each cycle of the machine, each time the die comes down, it is not cutting a single blank but rather is cutting the second half of one blank while it cuts the first half of the blank that follows. There are many benefits using progressive dies versus cut dies, mainly speed and accuracy. The various stamping lines have differing provisions for outfeed and stacking. Here we see 12 by 18 inch blanks being processed on stamping lines number one. The motorized outfeed brings the blank out of the press bed and to the operator, who hand stacks the blanks. Here at the outfeed of stamping lines number three, we see that the finished, sheeted octagon blank is being pulled from the press bed and then stacked by a robotic air cup stacking system. To maintain a high level of quality, periodically, the operator uses a full-size template and checks the size, shape, and hole placement on the blank. This is to ensure that none of the settings have drifted since the initial setup of the job. We have now seen how large volumes of standard size blanks are made, but if small quantities or odd shapes are needed, the Akron facility can handle those as well. Typically, these blanks are made one of two ways. First, for the real custom blank, like ovals or circles, CNC routers are used where a programmed high-speed drill bit routes the desired shape. Secondly, there are multiple turret presses used to punch out shapes with assorted dies. Although this equipment creates scrap that gets recycled, it more than makes up for the scrap in speed. The press is loaded with many straight dies and radius dies to make the necessary parts. These blanks are then taken to a grinder to make sure there are no sharp edges. If either one of the techniques is used, the blanks are then taken to a more manual laminator where the reflective material is applied cut apart and hand trimmed. From here, it is now time for the aluminum blanks to be shipped to Owensville, Missouri to be printed or imaged into a finished traffic sign. Although there are multiple ways of getting an image on a traffic sign, primarily two are used. 
After a graphics person lays out the desired image on a computer, the image will be printed on a clear film for signs being screen printed. Or for very small quantities, pressure sensitive or adhesive back vinyl is cut with what is called a plotter. The plotter is simply loaded with a small razor type cutting blade that cuts through the top layer of vinyl but not through the paper liner on the back side. From there, the unwanted material is pulled away, leaving the image. The vinyl is then picked up off the liner paper using a transfer tape. After it is lifted, a squeegee is used to apply pressure to transfer the image. The adhesives are stronger on the vinyl than the transfer tape, so when the tape is removed, the vinyl stays in place, giving you the finished sign. For larger quantities, screen printing is typically used to create the image. To create a screen, a clear film is printed on using a wide format digital printer. A metal frame with a polyester fabric gets coated with a liquid emulsion in a dark room. This emulsion is similar to a film in a camera and is sensitive to light. After the emulsion is dried into the screen, the image is taped to the back and it is exposed to light. During the exposure, the light is blocked from hitting the emulsion by the image on the film. This allows that area to stay soft, and then the image is able to be washed away. After some touch-up, the screen is taken to the printing area. There are several workstations along the main conveyor belt using hand screening tables and semi-automatic screen presses. Ink is poured into the screen and a squeegee forces the ink through the image area that was washed out earlier. The blank is then put on to a conveyor where it is cured in a gas oven. The blanks are then cooled and come off the conveyor ready to package for shipment. The process of manufacturing a traffic sign may not be as simple as you thought. There are numerous steps, from coil through packaging, that Grimco must perfect to provide the best possible product to our customer. This ensures that Grimco makes a quality sign that meets all the federal and state standards. Investing in the latest technology, continuing education of our employees, and attention to detail is why Grimco Incorporated is an industry leader today, as well as a company that is prepared to meet the challenges in the future.